Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I will continue talking about scalar product of two vectors in two and three dimensional cases. Now, the previous lecture um, about scalar product, um, the most important result of the previous lecture was that if you have two vectors, uh, A, let's say, consider it in two-dimensional case and vector B with coordinate representation A1, A2 and B1, B2 then their scalar product looks like this. So that's the most important result of the previous lecture. I also mentioned that um, scalar product should not really depend on the coordinates. It should depend on physical characteristics of vectors and their mutual uh, position, their lengths and the angle between them. Well, but looking at the formula, we see that it looks like it depends on the coordinates. Well, it remains to be proven that if I change the coordinates in some nice way, so the matrix of the, of the space is not changed, like lengths is preserved and the angle between uh, vectors is preserved, like a rotation, for instance. Then the formula, though it does depend on the coordinate, but the result of this calculation with different coordinates would be exactly the same. So that remains to be shown, and probably I will have some problems related to this. Today, I would like to um, um, concentrate on different expression of the scalar product, not in the coordinate form, but in the form of these physical characteristics which I was talking about, which are um, unchangeable, so to speak, like lengths and angle between vectors. Well, let me give you the final result. Which I'm going to prove. Lengths of the first vector times lengths of the second and the cosine of the angle between them. So that's something which is the final result which I will uh, uh, prove today. So if I will, and I hope I will, then it's reasonable to, um, it, it, it's actually quite obvious here that no matter how I change coordinates, if this is a geometric interpretation of the scalar product, so no matter how I change the coordinates, the result should be exactly the same as this one, as long as coordinates are changed in a nice fashion, in orthogonal fashion. So the length remains the same, so we don't really scale the coordinate system, and the angle between um, the vectors remain the same. So um, that's my final result, and I'm going to prove it in two cases, two-dimensional case and three-dimensional case. By the way, I did not mention it in the three-dimensional case. There is a similar formula. If you have a third coordinate, A3 and B3, then the result would be here. That would be in three-dimensional case, right? So I didn't mention it in the lecture, but I decided to put it into the notes for the previous lecture. So if you're interested, it's exactly the same, basically, derivation with A3, B3 as, as in a two-dimensional case. But, in, two, but in, 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 the, in the case of a geometric interpretation, there is a significant complication in a three-dimensional case. So I will probably spend a little bit more time on this. OK. Now, um, let's go to a two-dimensional case in geometric interpretation. All right. So this is easier because I can draw it on the board, and everything is kind of obvious here. Let's say this is my vector A and this is my vector B. Now, these are coordinates, and I also would like to mention this is angle alpha and this is angle beta. All right? Now, I can express coordinates in terms of lengths and and angles. How? Oh, well, very easily. Let's say this length is A. Length of the vector of the vector A 
is A, and length of the vector B is B. So this is A, this is B. If you drop the perpendiculars here, 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 and here, basically you can express the coordinates um, in case of A, for instance. This is A1, and this is A2. For a B, this is B1, and this is B2. So I can use the, the hypotenuse of this right triangle to find A1 equals to A, the length of the hypotenuse, times cosine of alpha, and A2 is equal to A cosine of beta. B1 is equal to B cosine of beta, and B2 is equal to B cosine, sorry, sine. Sine. This is beta, and this is alpha. Okay, now this is correct. Right. Alpha is for an A vector, so it's A cosine and A sine of alpha. Beta is the angle of the uh, B vector, so it's B cosine and B sine. Okay, fine. Now, since I have this expression, I can substitute this into my uh, scalar product. And what will I have? Well, scalar product of A times B is equal to a1, b1, it's a times b times the cosine and cosine. So a, b, cosine alpha, cosine beta. Um, and a2, b2 is a, b, sine alpha, sine beta. Well, if the angle between alpha and beta between A and B is phi, phi is equal to beta minus, minus alpha, or if you wish, beta is equal to alpha plus phi. Now, in this case, I can substitute this beta for these. And what I will have is AB, I will factor out AB, cosine alpha, cosine alpha plus phi, plus sine alpha, sine alpha plus phi. So you square bracket. So that's my final expression. Now, this is what I'm thinking I would like to, to get. This is capital A, this is capital B, and this is a cosine of phi. This doesn't look like this one, right? So A and B I do have, but the cosine of phi is not exactly this. But maybe it will be exactly like that if I will transform it slightly. Let's just think about it. Now, cosine of sum of two is equal to cosine alpha, cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine, uh, sorry, not beta, phi. Right? So that's the cosine of alpha plus beta, uh, alpha plus phi. Cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. Now, plus sine alpha times sine alpha uh, cosine phi. Right? That's the formula. Sine, cosine, plus cosine, sine.
equals well let's just multiply what do we have a b cosine square alpha cosine phi minus cosine alpha sine alpha and sine phi plus sine square cosine alpha cosine phi plus sine cosine and sine phi sine alpha cosine alpha and sine phi equals well first of all this and this are the same with the opposite signs, right? Here, I can factor out cosine phi, and what do I have? Cosine square plus sine square. Now, cosine plus sine square, cosine square plus sine square is one, so I get a b and cosine phi, which is exactly what I wanted to get. So as you see, no matter how I position the coordinates, I can always express these coordinates in terms of lengths of the vectors and some angles, but after the manipulation, this particular formula basically get rid, get, 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 gets rid of all these angles except one, angle between, between the vectors, which is phi. So this is a final formula for the same scalar product, but in a geometric fashion. Well, actually, geometric plus trigonometric, but that's OK. Um, so we are using geometric characteristics of vector, or if you want, physical characteristics, whatever, um, to express the scalar product. And that's very important. It depends only on the vectors, their lengths, and their position in space, rather than how we choose the coordinates. Another thing which I wanted to present to you today is exactly the same problem in three-dimensional space. Well, in three-dimensional space, it will be a little bit more involved uh, as far as the calculations are concerned. But the, the theory is exactly the same, and the formula will be exactly the same. It's still uh, length times length times, times the cosine of an angle between these two vectors in three-dimensional space. So let's go for it and see if if I will not make any mistakes on the way. In any case, I put all these calculations um, in the notes for this lecture. So basically, it's really straightforward. Um, I'll, I'll try not to lose my way around these three-dimensional coordinates. Uh, so it's three-dimensional coordinates, like this. OK, we will do exactly the same. So first of all, I know that the scalar product is expressed as this formula using the coordinates. So I will choose certain physical or geometric characteristics of the two vectors. Obviously, there are lengths and some angles. I need more angles um, in this particular case because it's a three-dimensional space. And I will use these physical uh, characteristics of the vectors to express all the coordinates, put it in the formula, and see if whatever is necessary will be just reduced, and I will have only the product of these two lengths and the cosine of the angle between them. And I will, hopefully. So first of all, um, how can I um, use this geometry of the three-dimensional three space to express my coordinates in terms of lengths of the vectors? Okay, here it is. Here is the picture. Now, this is three-dimensional space. So we have x, y, and z coordinates. Now, x, y, imagine it to be horizontal and z vertical up. 
All right. Now, if I have a vector, here is my vector A. Now, let's project it down onto uh, the horizontal xy space. And this would be the projection of this point. So this is A1, A2, A3 coordinates. Now, the projection here would have coordinates, obviously, A1, A2, 0, right? Now, this would be A1, this would be A2. Now, projection onto the Z will give me A3. And this point, obviously, would be 0, 0, A3. Now, let's have two angles. The angle number 1 would be from the X axis to the projection on the XY uh, plane. And let's call it alpha 1. This is a horizontal rotation from the x-axis to, um, to the projection of the a vector onto the plane, on the xy plane. Now, the second angle would be vertical, uh, alpha 2. between this projection and the real vector. So I will use these two angles. Now remember, in a two-dimensional case, I only needed one angle from x-axis to my vector. Now in this case, I need two. One from x-axis to the projection of the vector on the xy uh, plane, and then another angle vertically up. This is called azimuth vector, and this is called altitude vector. So azimuth is within the horizontal plane, and uh, altitude is within the vertical plane. Okay? So if the length of the vector A, original length, is A, now this is the projection, which means this is the right angle. So A is a hypotenuse. So the projection, length of the projection, is equal to A times cosine alpha. A times cosine alpha, alpha 2. So I have this one. Now this is the right angle. So this is the hypotenuse. So A1 is equal to A1 is equal to this times cosine of alpha 1. Hypotenuse, this is the catheters. The angle between them is alpha 1. So hypotenuse times the uh, cosine of the alpha 1. So this is how my A1 coordinate is expressed. Now A2 is A cosine alpha 2. It's the same thing. But now I need this catheters, which is sine of alpha 1. And finally, A3 is equal to, it's this, which is the same as this. So it's the opposite catheters with hypotenuse A and alpha 2 is angle. So it's A sine alpha 2. Obviously, with B, I will have exactly the same thing. I will have B and uh, 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 angles would be beta 1 and beta 2. That's how I will use it, right? So I don't need this anymore, because everything else is just trigonometric manipulation. Uh, OK. So my scalar product would look like a1 times b1, which is a B 
cosine alpha 2, cosine alpha 1, cosine beta 2, and cosine beta 1. Plus AB. Now A2 is cosine alpha 2 sine alpha 1. And same thing would be for the vector B. And the third coordinate, the product of the third coordinates would be AB and two signs. Okay. So, I wanted to prove that this is A times B times cosine of the angle between them. So, this big expression, AB is obviously is, is factored out cosine, 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 plus this, plus this, all together, they actually constitute the cosine of phi, where phi is an angle between these two vectors. Question is why? Okay, that's what I'm going to prove. I'm going to prove that this sum of these very complicated things is actually a cosine of the angle between these two vectors. And here is how. Let me go back to the drawing. Let's say this is vector A, and this is vector B. Let's consider this triangle. And I'm going to use, now this is the angle phi between them. I'm going to use the law of cosines for this particular triangle. I know the length of this is B, this is A, and the length of this is something which I can obviously calculate based on knowing the coordinates. I know the coordinates of A, it's these. Coordinates of B are similar with the, with the letter B and, and angle beta. So I can use just the formula between two point distance between two points, knowing their coordinates. Remember, the formula is um, the distance square is equal to a1 minus b1 square plus a2 minus b2 square plus a3 minus b3 square. Right? That's the formula for a distance in Euclidean space between points a1, a2, a3 and b1, b2, b3. So I will use this as the third coordinate and I also know that d square is supposed to be a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine phi. Now this is the uh, law of cosines for this particular triangle. So equating these two things, I can see what will be cosine phi in terms of all these cosines of alpha 1 and alpha 2 and uh, sines, etc., etc. So the equality between these two should give me the expression of cosine phi in terms of other angles, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, and beta 2. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to calculate this and compare it with this, and that's how I will find cosine phi. And I will actually find that the cosine phi is equal to exactly this thing. I know this, right? So let's try A1 minus B1 square. Okay. Uh, it's A1 square, which is A square cosine square alpha 2 and cosine square alpha 1 minus 2. A1 times B1. A1 times B1 would be AB cosine alpha 2, cosine alpha 1, cosine beta 2, and cosine beta 1. And plus b1 square, which is b square, cosine square, b beta 2, and cosine square, 
of eta 1. That's the first. Plus. Now, second one is a2 minus b2 square, which is a2 square minus 2a2b2 plus b2 square, right? So a2 square is cosine square alpha sine square alpha 1 minus 2ab cosine alpha 2 sine alpha 1 cosine beta 2 sine beta 1 and plus b2 square b square cosine square b2 sine square b1 and the third one a3 square which is this minus 2ab sine alpha 2 sine beta 2 and plus b2 square b3 square which is b square sine square alpha sorry beta Now let's think about what this is. I don't need this anymore. All right. Now, how can we simplify it? Well, very easy actually. Look at this. A two square cosine square alpha 2 times cosine square of alpha 1 plus sine square. So that's a square cosine square alpha 2, right? Now, if I will add this, a square cosine square and a square sine square would be just a square, right? So that's the result of this. Similarly, this would give me b square cosine square beta 2 times cosine square plus sine square, which is 1, right? Now, if I will add this one to this, I will have b square cosine plus b square sine square, it will be just b square. Okay? And what do I have left? Minus, minus 2ab times all this thing. This, this, and this. Cosine alpha 2, cosine alpha 1, cosine beta 2, cosine beta 1. Well, let me open the parentheses here. Now I will have only pluses. Cosine alpha 2, sine alpha 1, cosine beta 2, sine beta 1, plus... And the last one is sine alpha 2, sine beta 2. That's what I will have. That's the result of that's the result of this. Now let's compare it with this one. A square plus B square, A, A square plus B square, minus 2AB minus 2AB, cosine phi, and this is I have in square brackets. So whatever I have in the square brackets is actually a cosine phi, right? And look at this. It's exactly the same expression. Factor out AB, you will have exactly the same thing. Cosine uh, alpha 2, cosine alpha 1, cosine beta, and cosine beta 1. 
here cosine, sine, cosine, sine, and sine, sine. So it's exactly the same thing. So this expression can be replaced here as a, b times cosine, phi. And that's the end of it, basically. So as you see, in a three-dimensional case, situation is exactly the same. I have product of the lengths of two vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. Again, it depends only on geometrical characteristics of the vectors, not on their coordinates. Well, that was actually everything I wanted to tell today. Uh, I wanted to present the case of geometric uh, interpretation of the scalar product, and it is the product of their lengths times the cosine of the angle between them, independent on the coordinates. So as long as the coordinates are Euclidean, the vectors in space are positioned somehow. The vector, the vector, and the angle between them. So no matter where is the coordinate system, how we move this couple of vectors around without changing their um, lengths and without changing the angle between them, their scalar product would be exactly the same. And that's the beauty of this particular thing. And if you remember, when we started um, in the previous lecture, I started with certain rules how it would be nice to have this particular scalar product um, um, uh, adhere to certain properties, certain rules, as I was uh, calling them. And one of the rules was independence on the coordinates. So it depends only on the internal characteristics or inner characteristics. Maybe that's why sometimes this scalar product is called it is called inner product. Um, okay, that's it for today. I do recommend you to go through notes for this lecture. They are on unisor.com, um, and uh, just to you know to refresh that thing. It would be even better if you can just completely um, do it by yourself. Just have a piece of paper, draw some some drawings and try to derive, especially the three-dimensional case, which is a little bit more involved, and it needs certain spatial view. Um, I, I do recommend you to do it just by yourself. That would be great, of course. So that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.